Today, I will talk about what are the five things you need in order to improve your communication skills. If you are determined to become a better communicator, what are the five things you need to understand or remember or do in order to improve from where you are currently, your skill level, your capability level, to your desired capability level or your your level of excellence that you 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 look for your for, for your uh, professional needs. And then tomorrow we will learn how to connect with the audience. We will learn how to connect with the audience. And then on Wednesday, we will learn how to become more dynamic. We will learn, or rather, sorry. Today we will learn how to, what, what you need, the five essentials in order to learn or improve in your public speaking. Tomorrow, we'll talk about how to prepare well. How to prepare well. And on Wednesday, we'll talk about how to connect with your audience. And on Thursday, how to become what you call a dynamic communicator. We hear that all the time. And so we talk about how to be dynamic. So today, what are the five things you need to learn or understand in order to develop? Number two, that's for tomorrow. How do you prepare well? Because the depth of your presentation will determine the height of your performance. Number three, that's for Wednesday, we will talk about how do you connect with your audience? Because there's no communication without a connection between the speaker and the listener, or the speaker and his audience. How do you do that effectively and sustain it? And then on Thursday, we will talk about how to become a dynamic communicator. Okay, just a bit of background. I started public speaking quite early in life. My mom was interested in public speaking so was my dad in fact they met in a in a theater class or a an acting class and they were both public speakers growing up but i grew up as an insecure boy i was not very confident growing up and if you're dealing with confidence issues then i will you might be interested to listen to how i cope with my insecurities growing up okay so I, I did not just develop the skill without much effort and without much help from people. Meaning any form of growth, any form of development usually comes with a lot of help from well-meaning individuals and also some time learning and training. So I started with with Tula, I started with poetry and then it moved on to oral interp and then it moved into oratorical speaking or competitions and then it moved into debating and then I went into student leadership and so I did a lot of trainings for student leaders and then, then I became a professor for speech at Ateneo de Davao and then I went into government and then I went into legal practice, all of those required a lot of, of speaking and I was in, exposed to so many different types of public speaking and I learned through all of those opportunities including television, including uh, political speeches, business pitching now that I'm a businessman. So all of those years doing all of those roles allow me to develop different aspects or different kinds of delivery which I would be very glad to share with you today and the next three days. So it's not going to happen after you watch this series of videos. It will require for you to really uh, seek help from people and number two, also practice uh, delivery, okay? For those who have experience in debating, for those who have experience in public speaking, this might be a good opportunity for you to, to recall some of the basics. This might be an opportunity for you to remember the essentials that make a speech effective, that makes delivery effective. So there, so that's the, the background of this that we're doing today. Um, what is my goal? What is my goal? My goal 
is for us to emerge out of this week, talking about this week, developing an understanding of what public speaking is, developing a love for public speaking, and number three, a determination to be good at it, a, a, a conviction that I can develop into a better communicator, okay? So I want you to understand what it is. I want you to love it. And number three, I want you to be determined. So understanding, love, and determination, those are my goals for, for this week's series of lectures. And if we emerge from this, or as soon as we emerge from this quarantine and go back to our workplaces, I hope that we develop um, and we see rather opportunities to, to do public speaking and grab them. Hi, Elaine. I miss Miss Elaine Francisco Ledesma. Elaine was my main partner doing all of those trainings the past, was it five years, Elaine? She's now in, in New Zealand. I hope you're all safe in your homes, Elaine. I know that your country also declared a lockdown or a strict quarantine. So keep safe. Everyone keep safe wherever you may be. Okay, so today we will learn the five things. Before I proceed, I would like for you to type down in the comment section, what makes you struggle in your, in your role as a public speaker? What aspect of public speaking do you struggle with? Attorney Mark, pwede din ba itong topic sa vlogger? Pwede, pwede, Kuya Gilbert. <laughs> Kuya Gilbert Lazaro is actually an entrepreneur, an investor, stock investor, and also a vlogger. You can catch his vlogs. He has a, he has a YouTube channel. Miss, we miss you too, Elaine. Okay, so type down in the comment section, whenever you're given an opportunity to speak or you're invited to do a talk, why do you struggle? What, what part of speaking or doing public speaking or presentation or pitching do you struggle with? Ano yung asang ka nahihirapan? Bakit ka nahihirapan? Your comment here will allow me to limit or at least put a focus on the discussions in the next four days. In the next four days because there's so many things that can be talked about when we're, we're learning to communicate because communication is really basic in human existence. We, we cannot exist. We cannot make this world thrive if we don't communicate to one another. If we can bring across our ideas, if we can convince people to go this way or that way or to dissuade them from going a certain course, from taking a certain course. That's why communication is as basic to human existence as breathing itself. Without human communication, it's not going to work out for all of us. That's why it's in this quarantine season, we demand that our leaders communicate well. We demand that our doctors communicate well. We demand that families communicate and coordinate because it is essential that we communicate in times of crisis because there's danger. Without effective communication, there can't be effective movement and effective strategy, uh, implementation of strategies that just can't be done. Okay, so I'll give you about two minutes to type in Think about your public speaking experience or whatever it is that you have been tasked to do in the area of communication. And what made you struggle? What made you struggle? What made you struggle? Sipi mo nga, ano yung pumigil sa'yo? Ano yung nagpahirap nung experience na yun? Or ano yung naging, ano yung naging awkward? Ano yung naging awkward? Okay, I'll give you two minutes to write down your answer. Go, go. While I sip my coffee, iingitin ko na naman si Mr. Lu. Type down your answer. Hmm, okay. Okay, merong gaps yung train of thought ni Kuya Bobot Migraso. How do you handle yung, yung gaps uh, sa thought processes mo? 
And so if he resorts to writing or preparing for, for a talk with a script, with a manuscript, he sounds very mechanical. Okay, okay, that's noted. Manong Bobot. And I'm, I'm, I'm reading here. Okay, let's read a few. Tricia says, yung audience parang kakainin ako ng buhay. Okay. NR silang lahat. No reaction silang lahat. Di ko alam if natutuwa sila o hindi. Relatability with the audience. Okay. Non-receptive or preoccupied audience. Okay. Ako fear of being bashed or criticized. Okay. Okay, very good. Very good. For me, I become conscious on how to correct my pronunciation of the words I'm using and knowing how people would judge. Okay, so very conscious. Okay, my tongue can, cannot keep up with what I'm thinking. Okay, may problema po kung bright kayo. Okay, good, 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 good. Any more? Okay, any more comments? My tendency to talk too much. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Very good. Personal insecurities. I would rather write a speech and have our secretary deliver it to our group. Mm. Very good. Tata, okay. So, okay, let me write those down. Okay, I'm getting a piece of paper. Just hold on a sec. Okay, I'll, I'll write those down. <coughs> Okay. Hey. Good morning, Captain Randy from Cambodia. Okay. JV says he, he has stayed fried. Okay. 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 Since you, many of you, share about insecurities okay let me begin with <clears throat> with the five things you need to learn or you need to understand if you want to become an effective communicator okay and maybe as i answer my okay so you doubt whether you use a certain term or not Okay. Okay, Anbelia, diction, choice of words, train of thought. I'm on the right track and direction. My voice is clear enough. Oh, is it clear enough? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, good. Okay. So, let me begin by sharing with you five things very important if you want to become effective as a communicator. If you want to improve your ability to communicate uh, to people, if you want to have impact every time you speak, I'd like to share with you these five things. And then again, tomorrow we will talk about preparation. On Wednesday, we'll talk about connection with the audience. And on Thursday, we'll talk about how to become a dynamic communicator. Okay, if you're ready to listen, type, flatten the curve. Type, flatten the curve. Type in the comments below, flatten the curve. Let's flatten this curve. You need to know all of us back. Let's flatten this curve. Type it down. Flatten the curve. If you're ready to listen to the five things you need in order to become effective as a communicator. Queenie Hong said, getting lost in my train of thought. Okay, getting lost. So maraming train of thought issues. Ano yung pinost ni Kuya Hector na link? Sorry Kuya Hector, I, I don't have the 
time to click on the link. Flatten the curve, flatten the curve. Okay, very good. Are you ready? Ready, ready, ready. Okay, let's begin. Okay. <clears throat> Here are five things that are absolutely important if you want to become a good communicator. If you want to become a good vlogger, if you want to become a good uh, professor, if you want to become a good a government leader doing a lot of speeches, here are a few things you want to understand if you want to become a good communicator. Okay, Tanya Bustamante, I'd like to mention Tanya because I know Tanya is a performer. It doesn't mean that if you are a singer, performer, artist, etc., that you can become a good communicator or public speaker. Those are completely different skills. And that's why I hear a lot of artists, actresses, dancers who are excellent in their own craft on stage but they struggle when it comes to public speaking. So I, we will answer that in a bit. Okay, so here are the five things since we're ready. Number one, you want to become a good communicator? Number one, forget yourself. Public speaking is not about you. Public speaking is not about the communicator. You understand this? The moment you start thinking of yourself, you've already taken away a huge portion of what makes you effective. You've already successfully made yourself struggle. Public speaking is... Is, is giving a gift, is offering something to the audience in the service of an idea, okay? You are a communicator, you're offering something to the audience. You're offering an idea to the audience. You're offering a message to the audience. It's all about the idea you're offering to the audience. It's not about you, okay? Why do we struggle with insecurities? Why do we struggle with self-doubt? You know what? Many times we struggle with insecurities and self-doubt because first and foremost, we're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about ourselves. And then when you start thinking about yourself, that's when you start stuttering. That's where you lose your train of thought and the, all of the negative effects because you are self-distracting. You're distracting yourself. But I'd like to assure you that I struggled with that too. I told you earlier that I had insecurities. When I was starting, I was a small man. I was a small boy. And I'm still small to this day. I was asthmatic, so I was thin and small, and I had a big puffy head. Not a very good sight. So I was insecure. I was insecure. I was the smallest among our peers. But I, my mom thought that I could communicate, but I had so much self-doubt. And I was, because I had an early consciousness, self-awareness. I was self-aware early on in life, how I sounded. I was always very self-critical. I was always very self-critical. So that's the downside. But yours, okay. You're being self-critical. Listen, listen, listen. You're being self-critical will make you struggle. But your being self-critical will also be your key to your growth. It is both a weakness and a strength. Okay, Self-criticism is both a weakness and a strength. But self-criticism done the right way is good. But self-criticism that becomes an, a habit to become inward-looking, to be self-conscious, to be too to be thinking what others should think about me, to be thinking how am I pronouncing things. You know, when you are on stage, there's nothing much you could do about how you're pronouncing things. You pronounce the way you pronounce. You cannot keep correcting yourself. Alana, it's too late. You're on stage already. You might as well just give it your all. 
but you cannot give your all you're literally holding yourself back if you're thinking of yourself too much so every time you're given an opportunity to speak my friends every time you take the stage pray look at people in the eyes look at your material and remember it's not about you you're there to give you're there to offer something give it your very very best okay give it your very very best that's that's the thing so train train of thought usually it's okay I became I become ineffective the moment I think about myself I am a Christian and I believe in the teaching to get rid of self to disappear it is when we get rid of all self-consciousness and praise of self that's how we become effective that's how we become better communicators because when you become self-conscious you you it's like you're overshadowing the message it becomes about how you're performing it becomes how you're pronouncing it becomes your acute it becomes your it becomes about your pagpapatawa it becomes about you it becomes a performance and not really service there's a performance angle to it but a huge part of it should be service so don't think about yourself too much and just do the job just do the job go up there and you're doing a job you notice how the Japanese don't really the French many Europeans they, they don't pronounce the same way as Americans or the British do they don't have perfect grammar all the time they don't have perfect syntax or semantics all the time but they are not self-conscious why because they're second language learners they're second language learners you know that you're a second language learner this is not your first language i'm not expected to be perfect in the use of this language i will just do what i can to communicate this message and it's not about me it's about this message and it's about the opportunity for all of these people to learn okay that's first any questions so far any questions so far ang Pilipino kasi we were colonized before we develop a sense of nationhood we were colonized before we develop a sense of pride for our language and our culture we were colonized before we could agree on certain things that's why we're all separate and what is what is common among us is this foreign language that we use filipino oh, no no sorry not speaking uh, this foreign language that we use called english and that's why english becomes a measure of your ability to learn english becomes a measure of your intelligence unfortunately english is has become a measure of your capability to progress in life that's what was planted in our minds which is not really correct because english is just a language so don't don't be self-conscious okay okay that's first number two number two take out yourself that's first second one you want to learn to become a better communicator you need to be interested in communication you need to be obsessed with communication good learners excellent learners are obsessive learners and you could tell what people are obsessed with based on what they post on their social media accounts and what they do every day I have a friend who is a car guy he is obsessed with cars he knows everything about cars he reads about cars he buys magazines about cars he he collects toy cars that's why he's an expert in cars friends who are into watches and they collect things they read about watches that's why they become an expert in something and that's why if you want to be good at something like 
your communication or public speaking, have you obsessed about it enough? Because sometimes we desire to have it, we read a little bit about it, but in order to develop a good level of skill, you need to obsess to a certain level. Now, where does it really begin? Okay. Learning has roots in, there's no human learning without the seed of interest. You need to be very interested about it. You need to take interest in it. And that interest should grow and grow and nurture. You nurture that interest. You develop that interest. And when that, when you nurture that interest, you become passionate about it. You become obsessed about it. And you begin to see opportunities for learning that have been around you for the longest time. They've been around you. You can learn from people around you, but you just haven't been seeing them. Okay, I'll, I'll approve this point. Here. Okay. Like what I said about motivational leadership, which was our topic the first week. If you're not interested in something, you would be blind to that thing, even if it's right in front of you. Okay, let's say you're not interested in bags, bags, handbags. So if you're not interested in handbags, you enter a room, you will not see the handbags of people around you, no matter how expensive, no matter how fancy, no matter how rare. If you're not into watches, you don't care. And that's why Seiko friends, I used to collect Seikos, get offended when people refer to their Seikos as just a Seiko or just another watch. Because the guy is clearly not interested in Seikos. But for people who are interested in Seikos, they can tell the different kinds of Seikos and how rare they are, whether they're limited edition, whether they're only exclusive to the Japan market, etc., etc., etc. But you can blame people who are not interested because no matter how special that thing is and that's right in front of them they actually don't see it they don't find value in it so yun po yung una kailangan muna meron tayong interest so if you have interest the, the good thing is you can learn from from your peers you can learn from the internet you can research on youtube for speeches you can memorize speeches when I was learning and I was obsessed with developing the ability to enunciate, developing the ability to say things in many different ways, good thing that my father and my mother were also very interested in, in communication. And so they led me to watch a lot of movies. They led me to watch a lot of movies. And in those movies, we were not just watching them for the plot or character development. We were also watching them for the delivery for example when when professor higgins have grown accustomed to her face how why can't a woman be more like a man Pickering? the way he said things or we watched julius caesar the movie and I also memorized a lot of speeches. I memorized a lot of poems because I was obsessed with it and I wanted to become better at it. For example, Pana, I was floating lonely as a cloud. I was lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, it's it's putting myself as a, I was like a cloud. And so you're beginning to describe daffodils in the stretch of a beach. And so you learn to, to say things the way they should be told. Okay? So yun po yun, because there's interest, the interest will grow and that develops into passion. And when you're passionate about it, you will see how people deliver things. For example, now we're doing a lot of online stuff. I watch a lot of online material. Like, how do they deliver? How do they shoot? How do they position the camera? These are all crude. These are all crude, but I'm trying to learn as much as I can, as quick as I can, because of this thing we're doing. Nobody taught me. I hear a lot of tips from Kuya Mike Lu, but this is, this is all new to me. 
And so, let's be obsessive learners. Read up on it. Watch videos. You want to become a technical communicator? Look up technical communication. You want to become a humorous speaker? Watch the stand-up comedians. You want to become an, a, a, a powerful, convincing, persuasive communicator? You have all your material on YouTube and in the internet. But if you're not interested, you will not see them. Yun po yun. Number one, it's not about you. It's not about you. Number two, you need to be interested and to develop that interest, to nurture that interest, to research, to see. Not just see what they're doing, but see how they're doing things. Because you will not develop the skill if you don't see how it's being done. How it's being done. Okay? Um, yan yung pangalawa. Yan yung pangalawa. Pangatlo, if you want to become a good communicator, if you want to become a good communicator, number three, you want to know what kind of communicator you want to become. That's number three. You can't be all kinds of communicator for every single possible audience. Hindi po posible yon. Halimbawa, there are communicators who are pastors and preachers. They are pastors and preachers, and that's a particular genre of communication. It's a particular kind of speaking. And there are among us government leaders, and so you're talking about governance matters. You're giving orders. You're talking about rules. You're talking about consistency of implementation. Iba din po yun. Meron naman po sa ating mga profesor, mga teacher. Meron naman sa ating mga managers and supervisors. Meron naman sa ating mga negosyante. And so, all of those different roles require a different kind of communication, okay? So, you don't go out there trying to learn as many kinds as you can. You don't have to. And I don't think you have time to. And you won't be able to use them anyway. So, halimbawa, I am, a, I am really a trainer and a public speaker, professional, inspirational speaker, or keynote speaker, rather. So, I have two main genres plus a third, okay? The third I will explain in a bit. The first one is training. So, it is really the ability to, 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 to use a material, arrange it in a certain way, and communicate it and simplify it in a manner that this particular audience would understand. So, you, how to calibrate this particular message to meet the expectations and to be where the audience is as a professional trainer, kailangan ko yon. So it's it's so varied and the, the degree of difficulty is high. Now, if you're a policeman, ibang klase yon. You're giving orders, you're driving them, developing a sense of urgency. If you're a if you're a pastor, you'd want people to learn how to self-assess, to know God more, to be more committed, to, to alter their lifestyles, to become better with, with their families. Iba din po yun. So, what kind are you? And if you know what kind, then you would know where to look. Okay? Una, it's not about you. Forget yourself. Number two, be interested. Number three, decide... What am I? For example, I have my friend here, Mr. R.V. Mitra. R.V. used to be a debater from Ateneo de Davao, but he's now really a professional photographer, and he runs that business. So that's the particular kind of public speaking that he needs. Does he need to become a debater? No, he's no longer a debater. He doesn't need to argue with clients. He needs to persuade. See? That's an example. If your background is, for example, debating, as, as was my background, but... Oh, I didn't put back my mic. Did you still hear me well? So, nagbabago. Hindi na tayo debater. Hindi na tayo nag argue If you're a businessman and you're extremely argumentative, you won't get clients and you will lose clients. So from the argumentative person, you now need to transition into a persuasive business communicator. From, for example, you were a, a student leader who did a lot of theater. When you were doing theater, you were very emotive and there was a lot of movement and facial expression. 
But you are now, for example, a policeman or a, a jail officer or a military man and you can't be so emotive when you deliver and try to develop a sense of urgency. You can use certain tips but you need to find that area of focus. So, wag lahat, hanapin mo lang. Okay. Si Mark, ganito. So, ganito nga hanapin ko. Ang next level niyan is nahanap mo na kung ano yung kailangan mo. Let's say, Okay, I am a business communicator. Who are business communicators? Okay, let's watch Steve Jobs. Okay, let's watch Bill Gates. Okay, let's watch Alien Lunch. Let's watch Jack Ma. Let's watch... Okay, and you watch them on, on YouTube and try to copy what they do. Okay? Because Jack Ma is not like a motivational speaker. He's not like... Who's that guy who's a... He's not like... He's not like Tony Robbins. Jack Ma doesn't need to be Tony Robbins. Well, Tony Robbins, as a motivational speaker who transforms many lives with his powerful psychology-driven approach, that's his style because that's his job. Does Jack Ma need to do that in order to be effective? No. But is Jack Ma effective at what he does? Absolutely. Magkaiba. Okay, magkaiba. So, yun yung ating pangatlo. Hanapin mo lang kung ano yung kailangan at mag-focus ka doon. Hindi mo kailangan yung iba. Now, Kung nag-advance ka na, let's say I'm a technical communicator. I'm a technical communicator. I'll, I'll give you another example. So for example, si Kuya Hector. Kuya Hector used to be a counselor, a peer counselor, student leader. So a lot of it was self-assessment. We were doing a lot of camps. We were doing a lot of recollections. So his approach was very uh, emotional and um, reflective, brooding. Pero ngayon, he is now a QA VP, Operations VP of Pertua, um, an oil company. Iba yun. It's a shift. Now, once you shift, okay, si Mark Astrodes ngayon, negosyante. Communicator, uh, trainer, and now businessman. Pag businessman naman, iba naman yung ating area na kailangan. Now, if you have already set down the basics, then you can ask yourself, how else can I develop? Siguro dagdagan ko ng konti humor. Dagdagan ko ng konting humor. Dagdagan ko ng konting storytelling. Dagdagan ko ng konting ganito. To make my delivery more dynamic. Which we will talk about on Thursday. Okay? What are those three things again? Number one, it's not about you. Don't be self-conscious. Number two, you need to develop interest and grow that interest and be passionate about it because if you're passionate about it, you're obsessed, you will see all the lessons from people around you. In fact, you will see, oh, okay, so that's how you pronounce it. Ah, so that's how you say that line. Number three, number three, focus. You don't have to be everything for everyone. You just need to be effective in what God has called you to do. If you're an insurance uh, for example, consultant, uh, financial consultant, that's the type of communication or public speaking you need to do. If you are a salesman, that's the type of communication. If you're a preacher, that's the type. So focus, my friends. Okay? Number four. Number four. Number four. If you want to become a good communicator, and if you want to grow in your communication skills you need to invest in it you need to invest you need to invest hindi po siya hindi po siya darating na walang investment it can come in with the investment of number one time you need to invest time bibigyan mo siya ng oras araw-araw number two kailangan mo mag-invest ng pera because you might need to buy books you might need to subscribe to to certain lessons online. Or better yet, kung if you have a Toastmasters club near you, invest in your membership there. Invest, invest, invest. Because what you invest, you will plant and grow, and it will go back to you in the form of improved skills. Okay? So you invest your time. Give it your time. Automatic yun. Parang sinasabi natin na automatic yun na pag Merong kang passion, mag invest ka. Pero merong iba na nagiging passionate about it, hindi naman sila nag invest Hindi nag invest So when you say you invest in it, you buy books, you subscribe to some reading materials, you go get yourself a coach, you go enroll in a course, you go join a Toastmasters club, 
you invest kasi what's nice with humans once you are invested in it then you will try to maximize it if you did not put your money where your heart is baka wala talaga dun yung puso mo at baka hindi talaga magbe-benefit ikaw dun sa activity na yun because you did not really invest you did not really invest so after this find an opportunity to learn go invest in an opportunity to learn buy books there's so many books available wonderful books about about communication and speaking there are a lot of them so if you're interested you've developed a passion for it don't be afraid to use your money to use your time to invest in your growth in that particular area kasi babalik yan multiple times you know why Berkshire Hathaway founder Warren Buffett is the best investment in my life was my public speaking class Mr. Warren Buffett one of the wealthiest men in the world said it was when he enrolled in Dale Carnegie's public speaking class that he acquired the best skill that has helped him become a better businessman and human being so the first time he joined that seminar in fact he quit kasi sobra yung stage fright niya but he persevered he enrolled again he invested again and when he invested he developed the ability to communicate better so hindi pwedeng walang investment ako po i continue to buy books on communication i continue to subscribe i continue to invest my time because it is when you put your money where your heart is that you will really benefit from it okay number four number five number five review muna tayo can someone please summarize the four, the four things so far Okay, let me help you there na lang. Number one, it's not about you. Don't be self-conscious. It's about the message and the opportunity to serve this audience. Whatever little you can contribute, should be able you should be able to contribute that. Number two, it's important for you to... Ano nga yung number two? Number one is you... Don't be conscious. Number two, you need to be interested because it is when you develop interest that you see. Number three, you need to focus. Anong klase ng public speaker or communicator ka at anong kailangan mo? Kung teacher ka, be the best teacher. Kung kailangan mong maging salesperson, be the best salesperson. Hindi ibig sabihin na magaling kang teacher, magaling kang sales or magaling kang sales na magaling teacher. Ibang klase ng public speaking po yun. Number four, you need to invest. Put in your money, put in your time, put in your effort into developing your public speaking skills. Okay? Number five, number five, last thing, last thing. If you want to develop your public speaking skills or your communication skills, this is the same tip I gave when I taught you motivational leadership this is the tip celebrate small improvements celebrate small improvements if you went up the stage and you were not so paralyzed by your nervousness celebrate that treat yourself give yourself a treat go eat the night in a nice restaurant if you went out there and you were able to really connect with the audience, celebrate that development. Meaning, don't wait for you to become the superstar speaker, the, the amazing communicator. Most likely, it won't happen uh, in a week or in a month. It might take years. And that's why, in order for you to enjoy your journey to become a good public speaker, you need to celebrate the little improvements. But how do you know you are improving? You invest on someone who will give you feedback. You invest in someone who will give you feedback. If it's a friend or your wife, sabihan mo siya na, bigyan mo nga ako ng feedback kung anong ginawa ako dun sa speech. As he gives you feedback, you treat that person to lunch, you treat that person to a cup of coffee, Kasi as you invest in that relationship, he can also give you feedback. You could celebrate the, the small improvements, the small improvements. So it's all about incremental improvements. Oh, my language was a bit better. I was not stuttering too much. 
I was within time. I was not speaking too much. I was not speaking too little. It was just right. I got a congratulation from my dean. I got congratulations from the audience. They were clapping loudly. Those little things. Okay, so don't be too critical that you don't see the little improvements. You see the little improvements. So while you are not looking at yourself, meaning your focus is not on yourself, you're also celebrating. The other end to it is even while you're not self-conscious, you're aware. You're self-aware. I'm not self-conscious. I'm not thinking what they think about me. But I know I'm somehow getting better. I'm somehow getting better. And when I'm getting better, I I rejoice. I celebrate. Okay. One time, I'll end with this story. I started professional public speaking around 2008. I started because many of the country's public speakers were my clients when I was still a practicing lawyer. One of them was Francis Kong. He was actually my law office client. And Francis Kong was instrumental in my entry into public speaking or training professionally. I used to do a lot of training. I used to do a lot of teaching when I was a lecturer at the at Ateneo and while I was a student leader, but it was in around 2008 after about two years or two years, three years of being the lawyer of Francis Kong, and I had the chance to help out the company of Mr. Chinkitan and others, that they invited me. So as thanks to them, thanks to Francis, thanks to Anthony, thanks to Sir Bochimenez, thanks to Sir Ardi Roberto, thanks to Mr. Chinkitan and the, the, the group of original consultants and speakers. I started as a professional communicator on 2008. 2001, I was exposed to speaking and training when I was a an assistant to Mr. Vic Edwave. I did a few writing jobs for him. I did a few research work for him. So that was just my initial uh, exposure to it. And then in 2008, I became a professional. So when I was starting, it came very slow and I was just learning. I was just observing, learning the ropes. And then it began to pick up a bit around 2011, 2012. And I wasn't happy with how I did keynote speeches because I was very young. 2012, I was 20, so that's so. Eight years ago, I was in my mid-30s. I was young. I was not handling the big stages. I was really more a professor, a, spe a lecturer, a trainer, rather than a keynote speaker. And so keynote speaking, doing the the keynote speech in a big event was not my area of strength. And I did get a lot of, of, of keynote speeches. I still don't get a lot of keynote spe speeches. I wish I would get more in the coming years when I'm older and more mature and have a lot of stories to tell. But I would accept keynote uh, opportunities now if they trust me. But they're a test and a blessing. It was both a test and a blessing. I was invited to do a talk for one of the country's biggest banks. It was at Blue Leaf McKinley Company. I was with the driver of the consulting company I used to work with, Kuya Buboy. He drove me to the event at Blue Leaf McKinley. When we got there, there was a miscommunication between the office and the organizers. Um, apparently, our name was not relayed there, so the guards wouldn't let us in. It took over 30 minutes. I was in my suit and the driver was there, but the guards was out, sir. You're... Long story short, they somehow found a way, the office, to connect with the organizers, found the right guy, and then after almost uh, an hour, I was ready to take the stage. So at that point, I was feeling a little bit disappointed, irritated, but that was when I realized the need to really practice what I preach. What did I, what was the first point? It's not about me. It's not about me. If I'm easily insulted, then I will easily be, I'll say that again. If I'm easily insulted, I will be easily become arrogant. And I was looking inwardly and I was, no, no, it's not about you. Just go up the stage and do your very best. Breathe deep, said a prayer. It's a crowd of about 1,200. Went up the stage, delivered it the best that I can 
to deliver. And then I got my first standing ovation for that speech. It's rare that you get a standing ovation for a speech, for a keynote speech, but I got one that day. But that was not the highlight of my day. That was memorable. But the highlight of my day was this little comment. So I exited the audience, I went into the car, Kuya Buboy, who was stuck outside the gate, just like I was before we were allowed to enter. Kuya Buboy is an old man, he's just a driver, not just a driver, he was the driver of the consulting company. When I sat in, uh, in the car and we were driving back to the office, Kuya Buboy said this, Sir, parang gumagaling na po kayo. I remember those words to this day. And I celebrated that comment. Not from the audience who gave me a standing ovation, but from Kuya Buboy, because Kuya Buboy has been watching me deliver trainings and speeches since 2008. At that point, he was already observing me for four years. And for, for that comment to come from Kuya Buboy, he said, Sir, medyo gumagaling na po kayo. That meant so much to me. And that encouraged me to continue to develop my, my skills. So that's my last point. Celebrate the small wins. Celebrate the small comments. And especially comments from people that you trust, people who've seen you develop and grow. Take those, receive those criticisms, receive those comments, and make those comments and criticisms inspire you to become better communicators even more. Okay? What did we discuss today? Number one, it's not about you. Don't be self-conscious. Number two, be interested. Develop the obsession, the passion, so you will see the lessons all over. Number three, just focus on what you are called to be. Whether salesman, professor, business leader, government leader, develop that particular skill. You don't have to be all kinds of speakers for to do your role. You just need to be best to be good at what you do. Number three, uh, number four, number four, you need to invest. You need to invest your time, your effort, your money. Join a public speaking club. Any opportunity to speak, go take it. And number five, lastly, celebrate the little improvements and crave for the comments from people who really care for you. Okay? Thanks very much, my friends. Thanks very much for listening. So that's our lesson for today. And I hope you don't forget those lessons as we proceed to our lesson tomorrow on how to prepare effectively for a speech. I promise you I will talk about many of your issues of stage fright in greater detail tomorrow. I will talk about that in greater detail tomorrow. But for today, those are the five things. Do you have questions so far? Do you have questions? I might be able to answer a few questions if you have questions uh, about the five things that we shared today. Okay. Please share this video to some of your friends. You may start a watch party. Invite them to learn with you. So we spread the, the news about good communication and or to spread the need for good communication because this country needs better communicators. Do you agree? This country needs better communicators. Um, the truth is we have yet to see a president, a vice president, a, who at least after martial law, who's really excellent as a communicator. Baka wala pa. Halos lahat sila naging presidente, vice president. Hindi nila talaga strength yung public speaking. So, sana in the coming years, as this generation learns to communicate better, we will see national leaders who are better communicators. Okay? When is the best time for kids to be trained? Sir J.V., the earliest possible, the earliest possible. If you could ex uh, expose them to mga tula, poetry, as early as possible, just get them to, to memorize something and 
deliver it in front of the family, the earliest the better. Okay, how do you hide your flaw? That's a good question from Sir uh, Mohidin Sumagayan. You can't really hide your flaw because your attempt at hiding your flaw might be futile because they still see it. Uh, maybe if you think of what you could think of, Mohidin, is this. Uh, people don't really expect you to be perfect. People are are forgiving of some mistakes, of some lapses. So they will understand if there's a flaw, one or two. If humans as we are, we will be flawed, flawed. So you don't have to hide it. But you can recover from it by focusing on your outline, focusing on your material, and developing good momentum from it. You will. Uh, I'll give you a few tips on how to do that exactly when we get into how to control your audience or create a connection and how to become a, a dynamic community. Okay? Last question from you guys. Last question. Okay, so that's it for today. That's it for today. Those are the five uh, things you need to have in order to become a better communicator. Kuya Bobot asks, there are good thoughts and terms that you forgot your talks. How do you handle it? Mm. Well, what the beauty of public speaking is it's a real-time create. It's You're creating something in real time. It's something that's happening right here, right now. And whatever is, is there is what will be whatever is the audience will enjoy. So, if there are things that pray that there's another opportunity to, to say those things, because if you forget certain things, if you can, that's the, Mam Elaine, I'm sure, will know this. Uh, for for whole day or two day trainings, you, you get the opportunity to recover or to say things belatedly. But for short talks, like 30 minutes, one hour. That's why the level of preparation, I will be talking about this in greater detail tomorrow. The level of preparation for a shorter talk is more in, is, is deeper. It, it should be more intense. The focus should be higher because you can you can afford to miss certain things. You won't have time to recover. Okay? So, that's it for today. Tomorrow, let's talk about preparation. Stay healthy, my friends. Stay strong. Keep quarantine cases were more yesterday, but I can imagine these are still the results of the tests that they needed to do, but there's a backlog, so there's a delay in the release of, of the reports. But I believe that there's going to be good news in the coming days as we keep ourselves quarantined, not just here in the Philippines, but all over the world. Stay happy, my friends. Keep yourselves uh, hydrated. Try to find time to exercise. Don't eat too much. Easy on the Dalgona because there's so much sugar in that drink, but it's so yummy, I have to admit. But just uh, make sure that you don't drink too much sugary drinks. Okay, thanks. The next two weeks, yes, Sir Hector, the next two weeks will be critical. If we do it right the next two weeks, life might go back to a level of uh, normalcy. In the coming in, in, in two weeks but if not then it might get extended and it will be very hard for you so stay with us this is quarantine learning session brought to you by team arete thanks very much guys see you all again tomorrow <laughs>